Hey everyone, before we get to the video, I wanted to make a quick announcement. Myself and the rest of the Barbell Medicine crew will be hosting a Barbell Medicine Seminar in Arizona on March 24th and 25th. There are still spots available. Information about that seminar can be found by following the link down in the description area of this video. See you there. <sighs> Let's get rid of this. Where should we go? Nah, too noisy. Eh, not really the right mood. Ah, who's in charge of this green screen? Ah, that was close. Alright, you know what, I'm done, I quit. I don't get paid enough. We interrupt this program to bring you a word from our sponsor. Does your music suck? Gucci gang, 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 In this video, I'm mainly gonna be talking about why you should incorporate singles into your routine, but I'll also talk about how to incorporate them and when to incorporate them. Reason number one, it's sports specific training. This term gets a lot of flack by the strength training community because it's often associated with BOSU balls, mini parachutes, overpriced vertical jump trainers, and resistance bands. However, the truth is power lifters can benefit from regular exposure to sports specific training, i.e. singles. Squatting, benching, deadlifting, and pressing circa max weight is a skill that should be practiced. Before working with Austin, I never performed singles before a meet. My program of choice would always look something like this. A few months out, I'd perform heavy sets of five. I'd slowly continue adding weight, and once I can no longer perform sets of five, I'd drop down to sets of three. And then I'd continue adding weight until I couldn't perform threes, and I'd perform twos. And then I would save the single for meet day because I thought that that's the only time it really matters, right? I used to think that performing singles in the gym was ego driven and potentially injurious. I've also tried tons of percentage based programs that had me start with something like 60 to 65% of my one rep max. Over time that would increase to 70 or 75%, 80 to 85%. And then finishing with maybe around 90 to 95%. Uh, usually for an AMRAP set, as many reps as possible. And honestly, 90% for as many reps as possible usually ended up being three, four, or five reps. One of the problems with these two approaches is that I never had any practice with heavy singles. I would go into my meet having no real idea of what my attempts would be. I'd approach my second and third attempts and think to myself, I haven't touched this weight since my last meet. This type of thinking is not helpful and it would actually work against me most of the time. I remember my attempts being physically and psychologically taxing because my nerves would always get the best of me. Fast forward to October 2017 in Oakland, California at the United States Strengthlifting Fall Classic and I found myself approaching each attempt with a feeling of certainty and confidence. As I grab the bar, I feel like I'm back at the office. It feels routine. Leading up to this meet, Austin had me perform squat, deadlift, and press singles every week. And as we got closer to the meet, I even performed heavy singles with close variations of the contested lifts. Pin squats, Pause deadlifts. Pin presses, etc. Frequent exposure to heavy singles during this meat prep was tremendously helpful from a psychological standpoint. Additionally, the improved skill acquired from daily practice with the heavy singles helped my performance at the meet, obviously. Let's consider this. I took my squat from 235, 518 pounds in May of 2017, which was a PR at the time, to 250 kilos, 551 pounds in October of the same year, as well as adding 40 pounds to my press and 30 pounds to my deadlift. During my training cycle leading up to my 550 squat, I performed weekly singles with 500 or more pounds. I never squatted 500 pounds for any of my working sets during this training cycle. My heaviest set leading up to the meet was 495 for three reps. Now, I'm not saying this was by design or that it was right or wrong, but it's something worth noting. 
Now, I might be speculating here, but had I not performed heavy singles in the gym, thus never squatting 500 or more pounds, I'm sure my mental approach going into that meet would have been much worse. Technique cues would have been thrown out the window and my nerves would have got the best of me again. Reason number two why you should be performing heavy singles is because they can help determine your working weight for the day. Whether you're working with RPE or percentages, daily singles can help you accurately calculate working weights to nearly the exact intensity for that particular day. For example, if I worked up to 500 pounds for one rep at RP8, that would set my estimated one rep max at around 545. One rep at RP8 is about 92%. If my first back off set was five reps at RP8, I would know that 440 pounds would be my target weight because five reps at RP8 equals about 81%. And determining working weights with a percentage-based program is even more straightforward. You just use a percentage of your estimated one rep max based off of your top single. I think this is the most accurate way of prescribing the correct intensity for your training sessions. Much more accurate than calculating off of old PRs that you might have set months ago. It's important to note that these singles do not need to be at RPE 10. Typically one rep at RPE 8 is enough to simulate loads that would be used in a competition one rep at RP8 is about 92%, which is heavy enough to need to focus on technical execution and psychological preparation, but not so heavy that the lifter grinds out the rep with suboptimal form. One rep with 92% is not physically demanding, especially after a few weeks of exposure to this new demand. And in Austin Baraki's words, it's cool to notice how much the regular weekly practice of handling heavy singles helps at this point in my training cycle combined with the gradual increasing weight week to week, it makes these sorts of efforts feel less taxing from a physical and psychological standpoint. After all, it's not heavy compared to what you already did last week, and therefore less fatiguing overall. And reason number three, singles can be used to monitor progress within a training cycle. Monitoring daily or weekly singles will provide useful data that lets us know which lifts are trending up or not. Ideally, your singles at a given RPE would continue trending up from week to week. If you find that they're trending down for several consecutive weeks, maybe it's time to make some adjustments. Being able to monitor progress from week to week or block to block is much more useful than being unsure of your progress for an entire training cycle because you don't practice singles. Some programs prescribe AMRAP sets, as many reps as possible, to estimate progress, which can be useful, but I still think that Circumax singles are more useful because they are specific to the sport of powerlifting. And even if you're not a powerlifter, I'm sure you can appreciate seeing your one rep max go up. Everyone wants 225 and then 315, 405, 495, and so on. This last part's gonna be quick, but most of you are gonna ask, when should I incorporate singles into my program? And the answer is, it doesn't really matter. You can start now. I'd say do a month or so of a single at RP7, and then a couple of months of a single at RP8, and then maybe a couple of weeks of singles at RP9. Start out by just doing singles once a week on your comp squat, on your comp bench, your comp deadlift, or your comp press. And if you are a competitive powerlifter, as you approach your meet, you can start incorporating singles into your variations. Like I talked about earlier, pin squat, pause deadlift, slingshot bench, and on and on. So that's it. Heavy singles do not have to be reserved for competitive powerlifters only. Recreational lifters can benefit from it too. It can help you practice your sport. It can determine working weights for a particular day. And it can help you monitor progress within a training cycle. That's it. Thanks for watching. And always remember, tread on time. <laughs>